Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Dishing Up Digital podcast. Today, we have a special guest, my sister Tara. I'm very excited. Say hello, Tara. Welcome. Hello. I forget <laughs> that it's a podcast and it's not visual on YouTube. I yeah. waved. Yeah, we're also <laughs> recording this for our YouTube channel. So if you guys don't follow us on YouTube, Ellen and Tara, look it up. We have some fantastic vis- videos, in my unbiased opinion. <laughs> but today, we're... We're kind of, we're going to be talking about finding your passion in life. And when it came to me starting this podcast, I knew that I wanted to include some really inspiring like interviews and things. And the first person I thought of interviewing was my big sister. And I probably embarrassed you by saying that. But um, I think it's very natural as a little sister to always be looking up to your big sister, you know, in a sense, you know, you're five years older than me, very intelligent, very beautiful. I love you so much. Oh my and God, it's, so <laughs> it's just really cheesy. I was going to make a joke about you don't always look up to me because eventually you got taller than oh, me in height. So cute. <laughs> no, but I think Tara has had a really interesting kind of career journey yes. or university journey. Maybe you, you studied for what? Seven years, eight years. Uh, a million years eight or nine so today i'm gonna be interviewing tara we're gonna be talking through your journey and hopefully you guys listening or watching if you're on youtube can pick up some inspiration if you are kind of at stop laughing at yourself (laughs) (laughs) you're inspiring tara just let it be admit it just to stop laughing (laughs) okay so to kick off those of you who maybe aren't familiar with your story tell us about what you do what your job is at the moment what's your day-to-day life as tara mckenzie (laughs) (laughs) well i guess i'll start with the job question (laughs) oh my god i'm so awkward (laughs) this is literally what we always do in our youtube videos but i just put a microphone in front of you and now you're awkward (laughs) It feels weirdly formal now. So I work as a woman's wear designer, a fashion designer, some would call it. And I design clothes for a New Zealand company that's like quite big and it's a more affordable brand. So we have to keep in mind like price when we're designing. Um, And we design it from like concept to a sample to colors to trims to like print and pattern that goes on to the garment. You're quite like hands-on in the design process. Like I think that's the really cool thing about your job. And I think something you probably didn't expect when you graduated to go in and be like really part of the design process. Yeah, I guess I probably didn't expect to get to do it straight away. I feel like a lot of, I, I got really lucky in the role that I'm in that I kind of had time to come in as a junior and do the more junior tasks like like screenshotting stuff for other people and organizing things and cutting out pantones and then very quickly like departments moved around and I got to design stuff and then got to design more stuff so yeah a lot of people like a lot of new grads will be picking up pins off the floor (laughs) and like cleaning and not to discourage anyone who wants to be a fashion designer well it's just yeah I guess I did have like a period of doing that more junior stuff but Mm. yeah quickly got lucky enough to do more so now the plot twist to tara's career journey what were you doing five years ago uh so (laughs) ellen did pre-ask me this question (laughs) so i could figure it out but five years ago was 2016 this time of year i'd finished my thesis in nutrition and dietetics it was about health star ratings I went to supermarkets and measured shelves. <laughs> so different. And then I'd submitted that. And in the like interim period of trying to find a job as a dietitian, again, very different. <laughs> I was working as a marketing slash website slash designer at an electrical company. <laughs> again, got through very like a family different. connection. So at what point? Did you decide to do the 180 and be like, actually, I'm not all about the science and nutrition life anymore. I'm going to become a fashion designer. What point did that sort of happen? (laughs) I feel like it happened quite quickly, but also if I think back, it's probably like a 10 year kind of build up to it. But in 2016, I went for like an interview at a hospital for a dietetics position And we were doing the interview and I was really nervous about the nutrition stuff because that's what they knew about. 
So my answers were like a little bit more nervous. And then they'd ask me a few questions about like my blog and fashion and stuff. And I'd just go blah, 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 because I felt like I was the expert, I guess, in that you felt confident. situation. I felt more confident about it. But the way they took it was, oh, you seem more passionate about blogging and fashion than dietetics. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> And then a few months later, I was sitting there and I hadn't found a job yet. And I think I was watching Project Runway and I'd like recently sewn something and I was getting all inspired to sew again. And I was watching Project Runway and there were people talking about, oh, I went to Parsons and oh, I went to Mm. FIT. And I was like, huh, I wonder if I could go to fashion school. (laughs) I thought I've been thinking about like what I could retrain in because the dietetics thing wasn't really working out in terms of careers because there were so many graduates and not many roles and that one kind of just stuck and I sat with it for a few days and was like I think I want to I think I want to change careers I haven't even started this one but I want to change did you think at that point like no I'm being crazy or like that's too different because it is like so parallel opposite worlds (laughs) yes Yeah, I didn't really tell anyone. And I was like, I think I told you, even maybe even after I'd submitted my portfolio, it was like, oh. You told me when you were working on your portfolio, her portfolio to go to RMIT, where she studied. Because I looked, I feel like I skipped part of it, but I looked around at different places I could study. And I wanted to study somewhere better than New Zealand, as much as I love New Zealand. I felt like I had a better shot in the industry if I studied somewhere more well known and then it was so expensive to go to america or uk so i found rmit very well rated in melbourne short plane ride away and i think something that a lot of people listening would relate to is like you have this dream right you're like oh this would be a really cool thing to do this Mm -hmm. is what i want to do this is what gets me excited but it's so different when you then go and tell someone else when you like vocalize it (laughs) How terrifying was that process of telling me, telling my, our parents? I, I didn't tell our parents until after I got accepted and I was pretty much going. I was like <laughs> so nervous. And I don't know why in my head I thought they'd be unsupportive. I don't know. It wasn't that I thought they'd be unsupportive. I was scared that they'd be like, that's crazy. But they were like, oh, cool. Like, so supportive. I remember that because you told them at dinner one night. Yeah. And you started crying. And mum was like, why <laughs> are you happening? crying? <laughs> like, we would support you, like, whatever you want to do. Like, and I think that's a really lucky thing with us and our parents. And I had the same experience when I told them I wanted to quit my job and start mm. a business. I was freaking out because I was like, oh, my gosh, they're going to think I'm crazy. And I told them and my dad, his immediate response was, yes, I was going to. I was just telling your mum you should do that. Like, it's such a great opportunity. And then mum was kind of like. You know, she's she's more practical. So yeah. she like asks us questions like when we were both going through that, like, you know, what kind of how much is this gonna cost? You know, what are your finances? She's very practical. It's yeah. Good. <laughs> how are you gonna get there? And I had done this massive spreadsheet of figuring out how much I had saved, how much each like tuition would cost, how much renting would cost. I'd done like a full breakdown of costs being like, Can I actually afford to do this? And yeah. Because that's the other really interesting thing about you and changing your career and going and restarting was it was actually like a massive, like not only emotional decision, but also financial because Mm. you had to pay for all your uni fees. You couldn't get a loan. You then were like moving out from living with mum and dad to Mm. moving to a new country, all the costs involved with that, but also like moving out on your own and funding everything. Mm. Was there any point during your studying journey that you were just like I've made a mistake with it because I know it would have been really stressful I like I know you you know me we, we we're not like the most like confident when it comes to money we like to just we like to save our money and I think yeah. that would have been a big decision for you to be like okay actually I'm, I'm gonna, gonna spend all my savings <laughs> <Yeah>. on this <laughs> I was wanting to buy like a car and like move out so I'd been saving for that and I basically spent all of those savings on this free training so it was like a big financial commitment but I kind of I knew that I could keep working to kind of sustain me and then I was also like you know I believe I can if I have to when I finish I can work in retail and like pay back my credit card debt that I'm I eventually got to build at the last semester Mm. (laughs) I kind of ran out of money which yeah what was your question (laughs) 
No, that answers it. <laughs> That's okay. I think this is a really nice thing for the listeners and the watchers to hear though, because I know from working with my students and in my coaching programs, uh, one of the big issues for people is money, like the finance mm. thing. They, they tend to put their dreams and their passions in, you know, the passenger seat or like in, you know, second place compared to following and doing what they want like they they put that away because they think you know ah, oh, but I have to pay the bills and get a job that will like you know sustain me and my family or support me and my husband or whatever mm. it may be and for you what would you say now reflecting on that like because I think it's been tough for you because you're like oh I'm in my 30s I want to have like more money or whatever like compared uh, to my friends I'm not so. in my 30s <laughs> you're I'm <not>. turning 30 <laughs> can I just you're say you're turning 30 okay but I know like yeah. I know sometimes for you it's difficult because you feel like you like anyone who has a career yeah. change you essentially reset and you go back to the beginning yeah. again um, is there any, when you look back on your decision now how does it make you feel? I feel like it is a weird position to be in going into the workforce from retraining because I I am like significantly older I guess I was a mature mature student and you know other people that are at that career point are often quite a bit younger and people that were my age were quite a bit further on in their careers and then a lot of my friends are kind of further on in their careers they've been working for five years in a field um, and I'm kind of like fresh in there so it's weird being like you know that new grad junior stage at nearly 30 but I don't think I changed that I feel like it was the perfect po point of my life to do that because when I decided to retrain I was living at home <laughs> I was hoping to move out but I was living at home and I didn't have a mortgage I didn't have any debt apart from my student loan from my other degrees but in New Zealand you pay that back gradually um, I didn't have any credit card debt or a, like a car payment I didn't actually have a car I just used my parents car so I was kind of in the perfect, like, free position to do that. I didn't have kids. I could just move countries and it would be good. I feel like looking back from this point is really weird because I didn't know if it was going to work out. I didn't even know if I would get a job in fashion because, I mean, going back to high school, maybe I'm jumping ahead from some of your future questions, but I got told not to pursue fashion because there were no jobs or it was really hard mm. to get a job. And then... I was like, well, it can't be as hard as getting this dietetic job that I didn't get, so I'll give it a shot. I was still fine after that. I wanted to pursue it, even though it might not work out, but it did. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the, the other interesting thing about Tara's journey was like in school, you were very much like you had the science brain, like you were really good at your science, you were into your science, but then you mm. also had that creative side and that part of you that did want to be a fashion designer. Did you feel like part of you as a teenager just pushed that thought aside because you were told and because from the research you, you did, you were like, oh, I can't make enough money in that career. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did a project in year 11 with our careers counselor people they're like what do you want to do and I was like I want to be a fashion designer at that point I didn't really want to go into science I wanted to be a fashion designer and we did this project and they were like all the research was like don't do this this is dumb because you won't get a job it's a very stressful industry which yes I, I can't say yes, it's a stressful <laughs> industry that. um and that like yeah, and that it's not very well paid unless you're at the top which Yes, that's also true. <laughs> but I just, that was just what I wanted to do. And I guess I had gone on that journey of like trying to figure out what I was passionate about. And yeah, I, I then went into later high school going, well, I've got to do something else. I guess I also like science. And I kind of went there. I tried to get into medicine. I got an A minus, but still didn't get in. How crazy is that though? It's like you went from like, I want to be a doctor to like now, like I'm a fashion designer for one of New Zealand's like biggest retailers. Like it's just like, I mean, I don't know if we're New Zealand's biggest retailer. And we're calling it. We're calling sure. it. I said one of New Zealand's biggest okay. retailers. Wink, wink, nush, nush. I remember doing the same thing in school though. You had like, you had like a little test, almost like a quiz that you filled out and mm. then it gave you sort of potential job offers yeah. and then you could look up jobs you were interested in and it would tell you how much money they made mm. and various different things because yeah. I remember I'd looked at things like journalists versus like becoming an author because I, as a kid I was like well I like to write I'm very creative and like you look at all these 
you know, things that you're passionate about. Like I was like, maybe I could write like novels. Cause I always thought that would be cool. Like to be a novelist. Mm. And of course I was the same. Like you look it up and it's like, Oh, it's really hard to make it in this industry. You know, yeah. most authors don't make much money and you get put off by pursuing your dream because yeah. of money. And, and, and I think it's interesting cause I don't know about you, but for me, as I've grown older, I've realized like, I don't know, for me, money isn't the number one thing. Like, it's not yeah. my main motivation in life. Yeah. I think, I, I just remember so clearly, in New Zealand, we have this careers website, and it gives you, like, a scale of your likelihood of getting a job. And it's, like, a traffic light, and it's, like, good to bad, and it's, like, green or red. Fashion design was red. Dietetics, <laughs> when I started, was green. Great. By the end, red. <laughs> and it was just, like, so off-putting and... It's so know. interesting that you say that though, and you point out the shift between dietetics and how it was green and then it's yeah. kind of gone red. It's kind of funny because there is no guarantees no. now with jobs and going to university. That's my big thing. Yeah. I always tell like my students coming through my program or those who are interested and they're like, oh, I don't have a degree or a qualification. And I'm like, come on in. Like you don't necessarily mm. need that these days. It's not like when our parents went to university, number one, they got paid to go to university. They didn't have a student loan, yeah. but also it was like a guarantee. And yeah, there's no guarantees out there. And there's, I mean, there's no guarantees that you'll end up where you think you are. I guess I was quite open to where it might lead. I just knew I wanted to do something creative instead of science. But I knew that like, there's transferable skills that I enjoyed as part of my science degree that I could apply to business and I could apply to like whatever I did. Mm, you were telling me like a couple of months ago or maybe it was last year when you did like an Excel spreadsheet mm. for the designers or the buyers in your, <laughs> in, yeah. your, in, your, in your job and they were all super impressed and it, you were like using your <laughs> science skills. Because yeah. I had a massive uh, Excel spreadsheet for a part of my thesis. So I did learn quite a lot of Excel in that time. And it does come in handy. Like we're in a big business. We've got to track data. And I made this big sheet and I color coded it and I had auto formatting and filters. And I was just, I was real nerdy about it. I'm kind of proud. <laughs> okay. This is my next question that I always used to ask people back when I was a journalist is my like juicy, oh gosh. like emotional feels question. Are you ready? I'm not ready because I've heard a rumor that Ellen makes people cry in her <laughs> interviews. Is this the question? Well, this is one of the questions. Oh gosh. Sometimes it gets people thinking. It, it definitely gets me thinking, but the question is what would your younger self think of where you are now? So what would <laughs> like 16 year old Tara that's just been told that you know, only this many people are successful and get jobs as a fashion designer. And you kind of had like this dream that's, you know, not going to be your, your life anymore. Mm. And you have to choose something else. What would that Tara think of you now working at this retailer, designing clothes that are actually sold in store? Like Tara has clothes that like, I was talking about it with mom the other night. Mom was at work and one of the ladies, one of her colleagues mm. showed up wearing one of the shirts that Tara had designed. And, and she was, was like, like, that's Look cool. at my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> So how, um, how do you think your younger self would feel? Your teenage self, your childhood self? Oh, on so many levels, I feel like she'd be just like... <laughs> <laughs> the people on the podcast just can't like, see your face open there. Open mouth, <laughs> complete shock. Just 16-year-old me had kind of resigned herself that, you know, her interest in fashion would just be a hobby or just be a side thing, just be something you do on the weekend or a little bit, and that your life would be the science thing. I feel like she'd be so surprised... That number one, I moved countries by myself, mm. got an apartment by myself, like spent all that money, like I don't think people list, listening would actually understand for you how big of a deal just moving countries would yeah. be. Yeah. Because like you're such an introverted, like me, very introverted, shy people. Yeah. And we're also very homely. Like we we have good relationships with our family as Yeah. You can see. <laughs> like leaving all my family and friends. Like I purposely didn't go to university in a different city that first time but I think as well I probably wasn't ready at that age to mm. do that like I don't think straight out of school Tara would have ever done this so the path really was probably the only way it could have happened was if I'd done it something else first got that life experience and then been like yeah I can move countries and do this it's like the whole you know everything happens for a reason mm. if you had tried to go into fashion design straight away you wouldn't mm. have probably have been as successful as you are now I don't think so I don't think I could have got this job if I'd gone straight from uni I would have ended up on a different path probably mm. picking up things off the floor 
And you know, you know, you like got you got into your um, job interview with the, you know your current job when you were applying for that, and you'd done a lot of interviews, you know, at that point yeah, in your life. You yeah, know, you'd done your internship, you'd done your like retail jobs, you'd done your 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 interviews that you got for Diagetics. Like there was, yeah. you had some life experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd had more practice then. So for my current job, I actually applied for a, a senior role, but I kind of just went for it because I'd heard, you know. You can sometimes apply for jobs that are a bit more senior, but if they don't find anyone that's quite right, maybe they'll still want you or they might have another position that you could do. Um, so I applied for it and I didn't get it. That I was too junior, which junior applying for a senior role, it's kind of makes sense. Um, but luckily one of my friends actually worked in the design team already and kind of followed it up because they hadn't found anyone appropriate for like a few months and they were kind of approaching. It was a maternity contract and, you know, the, the lady was about to go on maternity leave. She was leave. about they, to pop. She's about to pop. She, they needed someone. Um, so I was lucky enough that they did a second interview with me and liked me enough, liked my portfolio enough to give me a shot. And that's how it all started. So I guess just go for it. If you like the sound of the job or you like the company, Mm. you know, give it a shot. Yeah. Okay. Last question, just to wrap it up. I wanted to let you have the mic and and give your advice to people who are maybe listening or watching and want to have a career change themselves, or they're trying to find their sort of passion in life. They're stuck in a job that's, you know, making them, I don't know, miserable. (laughs) What advice would you have to those people listening? I feel like if you're in a job that doesn't feel quite like the right fit for you. It is kind of a sign that maybe you should look for something else, but I wouldn't feel pressure to like snap and like quickly quit and completely change straight away. Like I feel like it's a process. It's a process. And you kind of have to look at the things in your life that might impact on that decision. Like if you have children or a house or like family that you want to stay around and, Maybe you don't know what your hobby or your passion is yet. I feel like there's so many like short courses out there or like really informative YouTube videos that you can watch and kind of start it kind of as a side thing and build it up. Like I really like how Ellen did it, where she started it kind of as a part-time business to see if she liked it, to see if she could do it. And she kind of built it up from there. And when once she got to a sustainable point, you then quit your job. Mm, yeah, I think that's a really like important thing that people don't think about a lot. Is like mm. sometimes it does take time. Like yeah. I've talked about in a previous episode, I used to call myself a serial side hustler because we had our blog. <laughs> yeah. Then we like tried to do the whole influencer thing. <laughs> then we like sold jewelry. We had yeah. our jewelry store. Then we had our clothing, like vintage clothing store. Then I did wedding videography. Yeah. And I mean, you look at you, you've tried a lot of different you yeah. know, careers and jobs. You had that marketing kind of design role as well. Yeah. I guess you kind of, you do need to try a few different things and see what sticks because you, you sometimes don't know what a job will be like until mm. you give it a try or you do a short course or I guess I did like this fashion career. I did build up to it because I didn't just spend, go from, no, I'm never doing that career and just give up. Like I did. I taught myself pattern making and I did it from books and I watched YouTube videos and I did it as this kind of side thing. And then in our blog shop that we had Ellen mentions, like I made some things for the shop Mm. that people bought and like that was great learning and you can do small things. It doesn't have to be a dramatic Mm. quit my job. It could be like you cut back one day at work and do something on the side for a bit. Yeah, I think it's something that, like, the internet and Instagram kind of, like, dramatizes. Mm. You know, like, quit your job and start your own business and then you'll have a Lamborghini. Like, have you seen those really spammy Facebook ads? No, those are fake. Like, (laughs) it's not real life. (laughs) It is, like, a process. And it actually reminds me your your idea of just maybe reducing your work hours and and then Mm. using, you know, your extra day a week. Um, A friend of mine does, like, accounting and what he was doing was, like, slowly reducing his hours to build up his own little like accounting firm Mm. and like his whole passion was working with charities so his accounting firm specializes in doing accounting for charities that's so cool um and like he's slowly transitioning and that's a really nice thing to do because he's got a young family yes so it it gives you that little sense of security you don't have to be the dramatic like i quit my job Mm. i'm going out on my own it can be a process and yeah Yeah. i guess on the other flip side if you If you don't have a family yet, you don't have a house yet, 
that you're like stuck in that you could sell or like if you are able to make those big moves like that's great like take up the opportunity while you have it because I guess like now that I've bought a house and I've kind of like settled in Auckland it is a bit harder to do Mm. something like I did back five years ago but yeah I don't regret that at all making that big move because it was like the perfect time it was just like it just felt right yeah you know that's something that mum always said to I think both of us it's like if you're going to do anything do it now like while you're you're young and you don't have those things tying you down but at the same time like your friend you know if you've got a family don't don't feel trapped Mm. that you have to Mm. stick to this one thing there are opportunities out there to try different things like even a lot of jobs do have transferable skills and you might be able to go into a slightly more junior role and still Mm. be able to do that in a slightly different field that you're interested in if anyone listening or watching is more like less like me in that you want to start your own business and maybe more like tara and you want to build a career and have a career change totally go follow rosie from badass careers on instagram just a little shout out to her because she has really great um tips and posts and advice about you know um organizing I guess finding out your skills what you're good Mm. at and how that could apply to different fields so definitely go check her out but I think that was kind of all my questions do you have any final thoughts or should we wrap it up there Tara I guess my final thought kind of comes back to like what Alan was saying about like what your young what would your younger self think and like what what is your inner child like I feel Mm. like you went on a journey of like listening to your inner child and seeing what they do because that's really the, the inside of yourself that gets excited about things mm. like what what do they get excited about because maybe that's something you could pursue if mm. you embracing more of change. that like playfulness I think with your inner child you know like what makes your inner child like excited and mm. what, what you could have fun with. well that is the end of the episode thank you Tara for being my first guest on the Digital <laughs> Digital Podcast uh, make sure you guys rate subscribe give the five star reviews, all that stuff. I'm still not used to the podcasting world and I, all my lingo is like YouTube. I'm like, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. And I'm like, oh no, wrong thing. Podcast. <laughs> um, but for those of you who are watching it on YouTube, thanks for tuning in. I know this is a bit of like a longer video, but if you enjoyed this more style of like chattiness, um, let us know in the comments and we can totally do more videos like this, I reckon. Mm. And watch Ellen's podcast or yeah. listen to Ellen's see, podcast. See, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, listen. it is hard. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. I will see you in the next episode of the Dishing Up Digital podcast. Bye. Bye.